Jack wrote me a note this week and was uh, raving about the deep, deep impact in his heart, his life, over this book about Tracy. And Tracy truly is one of our great, great heroes. Love her so much. I want you to love, honor, and bless her as she comes to talk with us for a bit. Thank you. Relax. <laughs> Jim Elliott was a missionary to Ecuador, and he was known for praying these, these powerful prayers once he was heard crying out, Oh God, forgive me for being so ordinary while claiming to know such an extraordinary God. Oh Lord, make us dangerous. And dangerous he was. He and four of his colleagues, together with their wives and their little children, went to Ecuador as missionaries. And the five men together went into this very dangerous tribe. They were known uh, to be violent and, and murderous. Nevertheless, they went, and, um, and all five of them were speared to death on their first trip in. But rather than return home broken and embittered, the wives took their babies in their arms, trekked through the jungles, found that tribe, and boldly declared the gospel of Jesus Christ to the men who murdered their husbands. As a result, they were, they were so impacted by such courage. They all gave their hearts and their souls to the Lord, and, and the gospel spread throughout that entire people group. Yeah, it's powerful. Jim was 29 years old when he died. You can imagine the children, they, they were just babies in arms. So in the words of Jim Elliott, I want to share with you some stories about three other dangerous missionaries. Are you ready? Yeah. There once was a man born of high circumstance. Heir to advantage, he had every chance to succeed. His name was John G. Lake. He was a very successful businessman. And this guy, John, he had everything for a man of his day. He was good looking, he had wealth, he had power and prestige, but then the Lord touched him in such a way. It just, it changed everything when light from the cross made his wealth appear small. And to their surprise, he went far from it all, all the way to Africa. He gathered up his family, a few of his friends, some missionary colleagues. They went to South Africa, Sub-Sahara Africa, and together they led tens of thousands to the Lord. They also suffered a great deal. Some lost their children. Some lost their wives. Some lost their lives. In fact, many did. People back home thought John was crazy. Why would he risk so much? He had a thriving ministry in the United States, and he just picked up and went. He did it for the love of his Savior, for that one priceless jewel. They did not understand, so they called him a fool. But what do you think? Was John a fool? He is no fool if he would choose to give what he can't keep, to gain what he can't lose. For the treasure of one soul, whose worth outshines all this world's gold. He is no fool. He is no fool. Jesus said, what would it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet forfeit his soul? To me, that means every treasure in this world, every priceless diamond, every ounce of gold in Fort Knox. I don't think there's much there these days, but you get the point. Every precious jewel and gem, every barrel of oil, every acre of beachfront real estate, every pearl of great price, every pirate's treasure buried in the deep blue sea, add it all together and it would not compare to the value of one human soul. That's why heaven in all its splendor and glory and magnificence stops to rejoice when one soul repents. John G. Lake knew that. There once was a lad who could run like the wind. 
given to lead, every man was his friend at the line. His name was Eric Lydell. They called him the Flying Scotsman. Any Scotsman here? <laughs> he was so fast. He was Britain's hope for the gold in the 1924 Paris Olympics. Eric broke the world's record for the 400 meter dash. It, his record was unbroken for 12 years. That's pretty good, but it's better than that. He also set the world's record for the 100 meter and the 200 meter sprints. Those records were unbroken for 35 years. So he had quite a, a legacy before him. And yet, rather than to enjoy the fame and fortune of a world-class Olympian athlete, Eric set it all aside to become, of all things, a missionary. Why would he do such a thing? Why would he forfeit so much? Light from the cross made his race appear small. And to their surprise, he went far from it all, all the way to China where he served with his parents and his sister as a missionary there for 18 years. Well, after a few years, he married, he had children, and World War II broke out. Still, he would not go home. Japan invaded China, so he sent his wife and three daughters to Canada for safety, but he himself refused to go. Shortly thereafter, he was captured and taken as a prisoner to a Japanese internment camp. He ministered in that place in extreme circumstances to the extent that he even gained the favor of the Japanese prison warden. And this warden came to Eric one day and offered him freedom in a prisoner exchange program. But Eric instead gave his place to a pregnant woman. All in all, he spent 18 years there and he died five months before liberation. On his last day, he wrote a letter to his wife, and his last words were, my love, Annie, it's about complete surrender. People back home thought Eric was a fool. What do you think? No. He is no fool if he would choose to give what he can't keep, to gain what he can't lose. For the treasure of one soul, whose worth outshines all this world's gold. He is no fool. He is no fool. Eric's favorite verse was Acts 20, verse 24, which says, I consider my life worth nothing to me, except that I may complete the race. Remember, he's a runner. And complete the task the Lord Jesus has given to me, the task of declaring the gospel of God's grace. There once was a lass with a heart pure as gold. Her beauty was legend and men sought her hand to hold. This flaming red-headed beauty was Amy Carmichael of Ireland. And man, the guys were after her. She grew up in a, in a very devout Christian home and even as a teenager had a thriving ministry in Ireland. And yet, she pursued Christ alone. When light from the cross made romance appear small, and to their surprise, she went far from it all. She left all those tall, dark, handsome, gorgeous hunks and followed Jesus on a boat to India. Now, get this. This is 120 years ago. She gathered up her corsets and bonnets and went on a ship alone to India, and when she got there, she saw such atrocities, one of which being children sold into sex slavery into the temples. So with every cent she had, she would buy them back, and she started an orphanage. Over time, she gathered about 100 children. I'm sorry, that's wrong, 1,000 children. After 40 years of ministering to these children, she suffered injuries from a debilitating fall which made her bedridden, and still she would not go home. Why would she do such? For the love of her Savior, for that one priceless jewel. They did not understand, so they called her a fool. 
What do you think, Sherry? Was she a fool, Kathy? She is no fool if she would choose to give what she can't keep to gain what she can't lose for the treasure of one's soul whose worth outshines all this world's gold. She is no fool. She is no fool. Amy served there for 60 years. She never once went home on furlough. Her ministry continues to this day. While bedridden, she wrote 35 books, many of which are still in print. I'm a missionary because Jesus is a missionary. He was the first missionary. He left the splendor and ease and, and beauty and glory of heaven to come and rescue us. He came to liberate us from death, hell, and the grave. He came to breathe life and hope back into broken humanity. It cost him dearly to do that. But he did it to establish God's kingdom here on earth. And though he came as a naked, helpless infant baby, he did not come empty-handed because all the resources of heaven were hidden in him. He came and healed the sick. He raised the dead. And then he calls us to go out and do likewise. He said, as I am in the world, so are you. And he gives us an opportunity to partner with them. And it's not like he needs us. We get to participate in the Great Commission. In Revelation, it says, Then I looked, and behold, an angel flying midair, proclaiming the eternal gospel to every kindred, tribe, and nation on the earth. He can send out an, Asian, uh, uh, an angel to do that, and he will. But instead, he offers us an opportunity to partner with him, to join him in his mission and his plan. And people will say, you're crazy. You're a fool to give into missions, whether it's here locally or abroad, to give your resources, your time, your prayers. But you know, I think one is a fool not to, because this is God's purpose and his plan, and he will accomplish his purposes and plans with us or without us. So I want to encourage you to align yourself up with his purposes and plans that he may bless you, equip you, and anoint you to go out and do likewise. And I want to thank Bethel Church. There's many here who have supported missions for years, and some were able to get up and go and spend themselves elsewhere. And I, I suspect I'm supposed to talk about Africa or my mission activity there, but I first wanted to give honor to those who have gone before us, who the world thought were fools, but from heaven's perspective, they were courageous champions. And I wanted to give opportunity to just honor all those. All those just lived in these last few years' time, and they spent themselves entirely. So if people think you're a fool for giving of yourselves towards missions, remember, you are no fool if you would choose. To give what you can't keep, to gain what you can't lose. For the treasure of one's soul, whose worth outshines all this world's gold. You are no fool, you are no fool.